Hello, welcome back to The Red Path. Today, we're gonna to talk about deployment. So I'm gonna break this down as much as possible and hopefully provide you with several things to consider when you deploy in your next game. So let's start with the things that you want to consider before you even place your first unit. First, you're gonna to want to recognize the threat of your opponent's army. You don't need specifics yet, but you do want to have an idea over what sort of archetype it is. Does it look like it's going to sit back and shoot? Is it a fast, aggressive army? Will it attempt to swamp the board? The army build will guide you how you're going to place your own units and how aggressive you will need to be to pursue a path to victory. Once you have an idea of what is coming for you, you next need to examine the mission itself and figure out how you can maximize your own scoring whilst minimizing your opponents. Typically, I recommend following the 51% rule, which is essentially this. How can I hold more than half of the objectives and reduce my opponent to holding less than half? Of the nine Strike Force missions in Grand Tournament 2022, seven are hold one, hold two, hold more, and six of the nine have five objectives, whilst three have six objectives, two of which require hold two, hold three, hold more. So for the five objective missions, it's fairly simple. You want to hold three for as long as possible. For the six objective missions, you want to hold three and hold a fourth, contest it, or kill your opponent off of it. To achieve these objectives, you need to examine the battlefield in a way that may not seem intuitive. You need to learn to ignore about half of it, quite frankly. Find the easiest three objectives you'll need to control and consider that your battlefield. Let's take abandoned sanctuaries as an example. We start with a generous Dawn of War style deployment with objectives tempting us to spread wide and push the flanks. For a relatively elite combat army such as the World Eaters, this is comparable to massed infantry advances in the early days of World War I across no man's land into machine gun fire. Rather than attempting to threaten the three central objectives, instead we only need to hold three total, which changes the battlefield from this to this. Consider how this may now affect your deployment. Regardless of what and where your opponent places, you know your impetus needs to focus on holding one objective in your own DZ and securing two of the three central primaries. If you can consistently hold these for the majority of the game, your primary score should top out well enough whilst also reducing your opponent's opportunity to score as well. Synergizing this with the progressive mission of holding the center, a secondary pick like Stranglehold and the new The Long War, even we lowly Chaos Space Marines can begin to stack victory points, earning situations well enough to have a fighting chance. So, now we have an idea of how to assess the battlefield, how do we actually capitalize on it? Every single map, bar the scouring, has a safe home primary but all maps have no man's land objectives within 12 inches of your deployment edge. This means that to be toe in on an objective, you need eight and a quarter inches of movement from your forward edge, more or less, as objectives themselves are 40 millimeters or about an inch and a half. So from the center of the objective marker, a circle with a radius of about three and three quarter inches spreads out. And as they are typically 12 inches from your deployment zone line, you end up needing just under nine inches of movement to achieve them. Appropriately, most Chaos Space Marine infantry models that can fit in a transport have six inches of movement. Sure, exceptions apply, but these exceptions are better suited for other purposes anyway. So, your cultists, marines, berserkers, chosen, whatever, can sit inside a transport more or less toe in the line and disembark immediately onto an objective after movement, every single turn. To make the most of this, my most recent lists have been upping the amount of bodies I can constantly churn out onto objectives. I begin with cultists, and then progress to killer units like warp talons, and retain my berserkers for late game melee with the added bonus of possessing obsec, so they can instead steal an objective if I feel an assault would be counterintuitive to victory. This recycling of me into the grinder allows me to at least partially overcome one of the Chaos Space Marines glaring weaknesses, longevity. Sure, I may not control the entire table, but I have the opportunity to control enough of it to score well enough for victory. 
Thus, when deploying, I pick an objective that is 12 inches from a preferably obscured position, and I know that is where my Rhino will position with Cultists inside. For another targeted objective, I will likely position another Cultist squad with a couple of units backing them up. Warp Talons and Berserkers, for example. I will envision where best my assaulting elements will need to be to be able to assist either of these objectives and or move to threaten an enemy held objective. Warp talons and firing lanes for any shooter units I possess are how I decide this. Staggered terrain for jump troops to hop between or open ground for my heavy assets to focus down. When deploying, as the I go you go method is still in effect, it is necessary to know your drop number, that is, how many units you will be placing on the table itself, not deep striking nor embarked. You can often figure out what your opponent will be deploying to when you see their forces. They of course will have access to some sort of reserve ability, but hopefully you can guess what they're likely to do and which units you need to outdrop if possible. I will typically hold one squad of cultists and one large squad of warp talons for my final drops, other permutations aside, as these are my typical frenzies. Whether capitalising on the sticky objective rules of missions like Data Scry Salvage, or wanting to eliminate a large threat early on. By knowing my opponent's drops, this can become somewhat easier, and is another reason I have moved to having more bodies on the field, potentially only starting with one unit embarked, if at all. Once I'm fairly confident in what I expect my opponent to do, I will begin with baiting deploys. Let's take abandoned sanctuaries again. If I want to push and hold the centre and left, I may begin by placing a cultist unit on the right, then my rhino with cultists inside on the left, then a small squad of talons on the right. This may cause my opponent to begin to spread their forces, concerned I will be pushing wide over the battlefield to stymie them. If they're running a smaller drop army, I'm then able to remove some of their assets from the early game, if not its entirety, as my right cultists can tide of traitors if needed, and my talons are able to quickly fall back to my strong flank. Once I'm out of assets to bait, I will then focus on obvious placements. My Land Raider Achilles behind a central-ish piece of obscure and calm behind or beside it. Berserk is lined up behind the Rhino and so on. Assets that I'm considering frenzying, my talons especially, will hold until the last minute to see where threats are located, but will be placed where possible so they can fall back behind obscuring if my opponent wins first turn. In general, when counter deploying, your main threats as a World Eaters army will be fast units, the Custody's bikes, Orc truck boys, things like that, or there'll be protected zone control such as Celestine or an Iron Hands Contemptor. These will often need to be the targets of an early missile, and a canny opponent will be aware of this, fortunately. Most players underestimate just how aggressive we can be turn one, and may rely on their typical resilience. With Warp Talons dropping in points, they have become a much better trade piece even when pointing low versus a more efficient unit. As with 10 bodies, once they've slain their target, they can move block or tag enemy units to squeeze a little more interactivity before their inevitable demise. So, to summarise, 1. Know your enemy. Judge their likely playstyle and how you need to counter it. 2. Know your mission. Focus on the topography you need to control, not the entire space. 3. Stack your scoring. Synergize as many secondaries as you can, which will help you focus on the one job you need to win the game. Sanctuaries is an awesome mission for behind enemy lines, but it may pull vital assets out of the game, ultimately trading up to 15 victory points there for say 9 on strangle and 8 on the primary, contributing to a loss. 4. Bait, counter deploy and focus. Draw out their deploys, match their threats with your own when necessary, and reinforce your own strengths with layers of redundancy. Mastering deployment is absolutely critical, and it's taken me a lot of games to really start to understand the nuance. There's no cookie cutter, one size fits all method of deployment. You have to know your own army strengths, its threat ranges, its good and bad trades, and preferably the same information about your opponents. But Building around a core of being able to score well each round is ultimately how you will win more games. So I hope this guide can help just a little with that. So until next time folks, stay healthy, stay safe, and kill main burn.